Now let's talk about Nepal. India's external affairs minister is visiting the country. He had a packed schedule. Jayshankar reached Kathmandu yesterday. He held multiple meetings with leaders from across party lines, opposition leaders, former prime ministers, and the current leadership, including Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel, better known as Prachand. Jayshankar did not go empty-handed. He took some gifts to Kathmandu, like a hydropower deal. India will buy more power from Nepal, some 10,000 megawatts over 10 years. It's a lucrative pact for Nepal. They can, they can generate substantial hydropower because they have, they have access to some 6,000 rivers. But their full potential remains untapped. So how much hydropower does Nepal generate today? Less than 3,000 megawatts. And what is the potential? About 42,000 megawatts. Then why can't Nepal generate more power? Well, two reasons. Lack of funds and know-how. And now India is stepping up to help. It will buy electricity from Nepal and invest in the power generation sector. India is helping Nepal build more plants. The specifics are still being finalized, but when the plants are ready, they will generate 8,250 megawatts of power. And what's the value of these investments? Billions of dollars, going by one report. During this visit, three cross-border transmission lines were also inaugurated. Kathmandu welcomed the agreement. Before this, India had just a short-term trading deal with them. Nepal wanted a long-term commitment. And the pact was being discussed since last year. Now both sides have finally signed it. The Nepalese Prime Minister has called it a milestone and a quantum leap for Nepal. And this was not the only deal they signed. The others cover areas like renewable energy, development projects in space. That's right. Nepal is building a satellite. It's called Munal. India will help them with the launch. And all this was discussed yesterday. Today was day two of the visit. Minister Jay Shankar made more announcements. He will extend a new financial package to Nepal to be used for reconstruction efforts. Last year, an earthquake rocked western Nepal. India will help rebuild infrastructure there. The package is worth $75 million. So overall, it was a productive trip. It strengthens India's relationship with Nepal and also sends a message to China. What kind of message? First, India enjoys cross-party support in Nepal. Kathmandu's political landscape is famously unstable. Leaders switch allegiances abruptly and prime ministers change at the drop of a hat. I'll give you an example. Since 2008, no government has managed to complete a full term in Nepal, not a single one. But engagement with India remains a consistent priority for all leaders and parties. During his visit, Minister Jayshankar met with all political stakeholders from across factions, and this underscores India's importance in Nepal's power circles. The second important takeaway is this. Both India and Nepal are working together despite their differences, and there are differences. There's been friction in the past, broadly because of two issues. The first is the boundary issue, and the status of three disputed territories, Kalapani, Lipu Lake, and Limpi Yadura disputed between India and Nepal. The second issue is India's changes to military recruitment and the impact it's had on Gurkha soldiers from Nepal. In the past, they could join the Indian Army, but recently India introduced what is called the Agni Pat scheme. It's basically changed the rules for recruitment. And this has affected the Gurkhas. These issues still remain unresolved, but recent engagements have shown that both sides are willing to look beyond them to focus on mutual benefits and maintain a positive trajectory in the relationship.